Hi, my name is Shunan Qi and I'm from Beijing. It is my great pleasure to present the discussion on the astronaudal NKT cell lymphoma modern treatments in a setting when the advanced techniques are less available. I have no disclosure. These are the learning objectives of my presentation. As a brief background review, astronodal NKT cell lymphoma is rare in Western population, while more common in East Asia and uh, South America. The disease is unique among aggressive non-Hodgkin lymphomas in its clinical features as well as treatment principles. The primary tumor showed extensive resistance to anthracycline-based chemotherapy while relatively sensitive to radiation. Radiotherapy is the backbone of curative treatment when disease confined to the original site. Uh, radiotherapy alone cures most early stage patients. It is essential even in CR cases and the dose response effect observed on long-term survival is quite similar to other solid tumors with a curative radiotherapy. This is the whole big background and the starting point of our radiotherapy planning. Compromises in radiotherapy target and dose associated with a poor outcome. And the early paper from the Korea group showed a very high local regional failure rate when a uh, lower dose and a smaller field was used comparing to the current treatment standard. Our CLCG data also showed that in the dose range of 10 to 50 gray, a clear dose response effect could be observed on the local regional control overall survival and the progression-free survival, and the local regional control linearly associated with the survivals. These were validated with the external data. Currently, we recommend a 50 degree as the standard prescription dose. In China, I think currently, the big challenge remains in the huge patient population and the high cost of the advanced techniques. These burdens are very heavy to the developing society. I would like to focus majorly on the two aspects of the advanced techniques availability, the imaging modality and the treatment techniques. By demonstrating the way they affect in disease staging, lesion delineation, target coverage, and normal tissue protection. Although PCD is recommended by the Cisco guidelines in the astronodal NKT cell lymphoma treatment, it is not routinely covered by our social medical insurance. MRI and the CT are still acceptable in staging. I would use a case to discuss how the treatment would be affected in a less ideal technique setting. This patient is a 50-year-old male, presented only some local symptoms. The nasal endoscopy showed a mass in the left nasal cavity. On the CT image, we can see the left nasal cavity lesion and the fullness of the paranasal sinuses. If this is the only imaging we could get, probably the physicians would take on the safe side to include any suspicious abnormalities, even we think some may be inflammatory disease. With the MR images, we can tell the vast majority of the abnormal signal intensity involving the nasal cavity and the, the sinuses appears to be inflammatory in nature. The PET-CT confirmed the MR findings. In this case, we can safely shrink the CTV following the AROG RSRT guideline Richard showed in his presentation. With best imaging, 
PET and the MRI helped delineate GTV and give more confidence in excluding disease involvement of other adjacent structures and the absence of a distant spread. Therefore, in low-risk cases like this, with no primary tumor invasion to the adjacent structures and no distant disease, upfront radiotherapy alone may be a suitable strategy. PET-CT is even more important in detecting acute distant metastasis as shown in this case by the error, the small adrenal gland mass. If the patient does not get a PET-CT and is understaged, then a treatment strategy with upfront radiotherapy or radiotherapy alone will not be optimal. In our early cohort, Stage 2E disease had a poor outcomes with the radiotherapy and the combined TROP chemotherapy, partially because of the understaging with less advanced imaging techniques. The CLCG group study included exclusively the academic institutions, noticed a continuously decreasing use of 2D and 3D CRT techniques and the increasing use of RMRT in the past 20 years, and the advanced techniques associated with the comprehensive survival benefit across risk subgroups. Looking back to our 2D and 3D CRT error techniques, this is a typical nasal origin astronodal NKT cell lymphoma 3 fields plan we used in the 2D era with two opposite lateral fields and one emphase field. We may also add a small electron field to boost. These figures showed a 3D CRT field basically following the same principles. These figures show the, the dose distribution in the planning system with the 95% uh, isodose line. We can see a nice coverage of the target. With uh, this techniques and a high dose of 50 to 55 degree, a good uh, survival could be achieved in very localized disease. However, as we could find, many organ at risk are infused or close to the target. A significant a higher doses would be expected relating to the 2D and 3D CRT techniques comparing to the more advanced RMRT, VMAT, and the proton therapies on the uh, organ at risk. However, in the scenarios with less advanced techniques available, the principles of modern radiotherapy for lymphomas can and should also be applied, but with some modifications, for example, larger margins accounting for more uncertainties. Here listed the settings that may need to introduce larger margins when in the lack of advanced imaging techniques, in the lack of accurate diffusion of the images, in the lack of uh, advanced conformal planning system, in the lack of uh, movement control, in the lack of uh, RGRT or optimal systemic treatment. To summary, Radiotherapy is the backbone of curative treatment in astronodal NKT cell lymphoma, and a compromise in dose and the target coverage would lead to inferior outcome. That's why we put RT dose and the field the first priority. Modifications are needed in the absence of advanced techniques with modern involved site radiotherapy. Lack of advanced techniques will result in much more uncertainties, larger margins, and more toxicities. A balance needed to be made between radiotherapy and the toxicity 
in our institution, we put the curability, the first priority. Of course, a supportive care would be essential for acute toxicity and always be cautious to the later toxicities. I will stop here and express my appreciation to my great Iraq and the Beijing colleagues. Thank you for your attention. For any questions, I can be reached via this email.